Hello everybody, welcome aboard. Good to see you. I've had a number of people uh, send me requests for how do I actually get into X-Plane. And being that the setup process for X-Plane is not particularly intuitive, I thought it might be a good idea to try to throw together a little guide and uh, see if we can get some more folks into our lovely, uh, lovely little simulator here. So, without, uh, without further ado, I have my X-Plane configured basically the same as you would have it um, as soon as you have fired it up for the very first time. Uh, we have uh, we have no preferences loaded. We have minimal number of plugins loaded. And when I fire this thing up here in a second, you're going to load in the default Cessna in Seattle. So the goal of this particular video is to walk somebody through uh, setting up X-Plane in a such a way that you would be ready to fly on uh, onto an online network. Uh, my network of choice is Pilot Edge, so that's kind of what I'll be focusing towards. Um, setting it up so that we get rid of some of the annoying ATC stuff. We get rid of all the AI airplane. We get rid of all the kind of bullshit not cold and dark and all that stuff at the beginning. Um, not necessarily going to focus too much on, uh, on graphic settings, although we will manipulate a few of the key settings, but uh, the hardcore graphic settings and whatnot, we'll probably have to save for a, uh, another time. Uh, we'll talk about the view system, how to move around the cockpit, how to set your, your controls and your, or how to set your views up in the cockpit. And then we'll move into uh, setting up the controls. And really the beef of, the, uh, the beef of this video is to focus on how do I configure my joystick? How do I configure my control settings uh, in such a way that I can uh, that I can fly, that I can actually do something? So I personally have an X55 Rhino, and that is going to be the uh, the focus of uh, this video: is how to set an X55 Rhino up. Uh, I'm going to, through the powers of editing, hopefully show you my configuration scheme, all the buttons and gizmos and whatnot that I use, along with the exact name of the um, the commands that we're going to be running in order to use those, uh, use those settings. So uh, it should be pretty easily transferable to other, uh, other sticks, and it will give you an idea of kind of all the basics and at least what they are named and how you can find them in the uh, control settings. So without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and fire the sim up. Uh, I am running the Steam version of X-Plane. One of the only downsides to Steam in my mind is that you don't get access to some of the early beta versions of the, of the uh, sim. I, with the video stuff that I do and the streaming and whatnot, that's not a hugely important thing, um, especially with X-Plane 10.40. It was kind of a rocky beta period, so uh, I'm totally okay with running the X-Plane version. And within the X-Plane version, we can, uh, we get quote-unquote free DLC that we can check. And as you can see here, I only have the European and the North American scenery loaded. But all I would have to do is, like, for instance, check the Australia scenery, and the sim would go out, or the, uh, this, this... <laughs> the sim the steams would go out there and retrieve the uh, the necessary scenery and install it into my pack so um i like steam I, I run as you can see i have a lot of games that are installed on steam and probably many more games that um are not installed so anyway we're going to hit this play button here and hit play one more time load into x-plane 64-bit uh it's going to load up in a windowed mode initially it's going to take a few minutes here to uh, kind of do its thing and as soon as it loads, it's going to start making a lot of noise at us. It's going to yell at us. ATC is going to start talking. November 03 X ray. Papa, runway 16 left. Taxi via Bravo. Hold short of runway 16 left. Runway 16 left. Taxi via Bravo. Hold short of 16 left. November 03 X ray. Papa. November 0, 1, X-ray, Papa, runway 16 left, taxi via Bravo, hold short of runway 16 left. Well, that was certainly a mouthful to start with. Um, I, I, there's so many ways that X-Plane and, and Laminar could improve the setup process, and not starting like that, I think, would be one of them. Um, but anyway, we, that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna work with here. We'll go ahead and maximize X-Plane. I'm gonna I, I I always run X-Plane in windowed mode personally. It just makes it easier for me to record uh, and do the kind of stuff that I do. You can set it to full screen mode by all means. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so we are going to maximize it. We're going to go ahead and uh, not calibrate our devices because uh, we're going to set that up manually later. And uh, yeah, we understand how to do this. Quick lesson, whatever. Runway um, one six left. Taxi via Bravo. Hold short of one six left. November zero one X-ray. Papa. So the first order of business is to get rid of that, uh, the ATC. So to do that, we're going to run up here to the settings tab. We're going to go to render, or sorry, sound. Uh, we'll turn off verbal and turn off text ATC. While we're in this, uh, I also like to run my engine and all my sounds very, very much on the low side. 
Uh, makes it easier for me when I'm doing my recording and all that good stuff. So while I'm in this setting, I'm also going to pull everything back to 20%. And that's kind of the, the magic number that I found where I could hear my uh, online ATC and still be able to hear enough of, the, enough of the plane that I actually care. So with that, that has completely gotten rid of the X-Plane default ATC. Hooray. Uh, it's not very good. If you want to use it, by all means, go ahead and try. But I haven't heard a whole lot of good things about it. So we're sitting here in Seattle. Uh, runway 34 right in the default Cessna 172. Uh, we're not going to be in this plane very long, and we won't be on this runway very long. Uh, we can also see there's a big-ass plane here taxiing out to uh, get the hell out of here. So we may want to get him shut off pretty soon. Uh, actually, that's the next thing that I want to do. So we're going to turn our... Uh, we're basically going to shut all AI aircraft off. And we do this... Uh, I know on VATSIM you need to have AI aircraft set to a certain value in order for it to work properly. Uh, I don't know how that configuration actually works, so that might be a good thing for the X-Squawk box forms. But in my particular case, uh, I'm going to set it to, uh, I'm going to turn basically turn them all off, and we're doing that uh, because Pilot Edge doesn't need them. Pilot Edge doesn't want them. So we're going to go to uh, Aircraft, Aircraft and Situations, press the Other Aircraft tab here, and we're going to set the number of aircraft to 1. We do that, we close, suddenly we'll see, hey, that, uh, that big plane that was out there is now gone. So now we are the only people that inhabit this uh, this particular universe. The next things that we want to do is go to the operations and warnings section. So settings, operations, and warnings. Um, if you would like to send laminar information, by all means, I'm sure that they will love to get information from you. Um, I, it's all you know, non-personal, non-identifying. Basically, like how do you use X plane? How do you fuck X plane up? And all that good stuff. So yes, I would like to send that over. In the operations and warning page, uh, we're going to use this to set up a, uh, a few more things to uh, uh, get our sim in a uh, kind of, at least my personal usable state. Um, well, uh, languages, whatever, if you're, you know how languages work. Uh, flight models per frame, leave this at two. Uh, some recommend, there's some people that recommend three for certain planes in certain situations, but in general, always leave this at two. I don't actually know what exactly this thing does. I'm sure somebody can explain that, and probably somebody will. Um, what we're really concerned about here is in the startup section. We want to start each flight on the ramp. Um, this means that we won't be starting our particular, we won't be starting our flights out on the runway, which is a big no-no when you're flying online. Uh, we'll start each flight cold and dark, and we're doing that to start the plane up cold and dark. We don't want the plane running. Uh, if you want to have the plane running every single time you load up, press that button. It does cause some problems with some payware aircraft, but for the most part, it works fairly, fairly well. On the, uh, on the warning side, we're going to uh, not warn me of incomplete scenery installations. Uh, there exist sometimes issues where uh, if a single object is missing in a scenery uh, load, it'll pop a big warning window up. It'll get rid of all your, kind of all your sim, whatever your sim is doing, and it'll say, hey, I tried to load something and I couldn't. And you're just like, all right, man, I don't care. Um, I keep an eye on your log files and all that stuff to see if that kind of stuff happens. If you're loading new scenery, you may want to check this briefly. Um, and make sure it all loads okay. And uh, the rest of the stuff on this particular page, we're not too, or this section, we're not concerned about. Uh, as far as the damage section goes, um, X plane is very binary in the sense of damage. If you are one knot over the flap, over uh, VFE, uh, you will bust your flaps. If you are one knot over any of the particular speed scenarios, you will bust your flaps. And yes, you should. <laughs> Yes, I, I suppose you could say um, I, I want to do that because it gives you more challenge, but the issue comes in things like weather reloads where you're moving at a speed and suddenly the weather reloads and it does all sorts of weird shit to your sim. And suddenly you're moving a lot, like relative to the air, you're moving faster, you're moving slower. Um, I just don't personally like using X-Plane um, to model my damage. So uh, we'll also reset on hard crash as well. Um, so we'll leave all the damage stuff turned off. And that's by all means up to you if you want to run that or not. So moving on from there, um, the next thing people want to know is how is my sim running? The all-important frame rate monitor. So we're going to go to settings, data input and output. Uh, there's a whole lot of stuff here, a whole lot of things that we may or may not care about. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff here. Um, the most important one that we're going to cover right now is the frame rate section. So each of these each of these items shows you a list of data refs, and each of these four boxes control how that data ref is shown. 
Uh, the first tick box sends it out over the internet, which is some location that you've defined. The second tick box writes it to a file. The third tick box, I think, shows you a graph. I'm not really sure. Um, go to the graphics display for visual reference. I'm actually not sure where this actually goes. But what we're concerned about is the last one here, cockpit display. So we're going to check the cockpit display button, the far right button for frame rates. Close that sucker out. And now you can see sitting here on the ground, we are running at 41 frames per second. And the simulation is running at 41 frames per second. And each frame is taking 24 milliseconds to render. Um, later down the road, if I, if I decide to do a video on how to configure graphics and whatnot, what not, these numbers will become more and more important. But for the time being, I don't really care about those. But people want to know how to see their frame rate, so that's how you can find your frame rate. These are the two numbers that you're most concerned about. So we've gone ahead and uh, configured the sim up so that there's no ATC. We've gotten rid of all the, a, um, all, the, uh, all the AI planes. We've configured our plane up so that it will start cold and dark on the ramp. And we've kind of changed a few other settings here and there to make our quality of life just a little bit easier. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is load into a, uh, reload a plane. And we're going to actually load into a different plane. I'm going to load into the Beechcraft Baron. So we were in the Cessna 172. We'll load into the Beechcraft Baron. And I'm doing this so that when I do my control configuration, I have access to things like mixture and prop settings and all that good stuff. So the Baron's a little bit more complex than the 172 and will allow us to see uh, visually a few more things that are happening on the screen here. Um, so with this plane loaded up, we're now on a ramp. The engines are not running and we've got this, we've got this panel in front of us that is, uh, that is quite large. So this is the one and only time we're going to go into the rendering settings and then change a few things about how the sim looks. Uh, so if we go to settings and then rendering options, uh, these are all the rendering options for X-Plane. There are videos and guides and all that stuff out there, and I'll even include a link to the, uh, the rendering options that I, that I use by default. Uh, we're not going to worry about the resolution stuff. We're not going to worry about the stuff to draw stuff. Um, like I said, you can find some of that stuff on your own, or maybe we'll do another video on it later. What I am going to say, though, under the special effects section, if you can get away with running HDR rendering, you really should. This is the kind of magic checkbox that makes X-Plane do what makes X-Plane super, is super special about, and that's this, the really, really nice lighting engine. So we're gonna go ahead and check HDR rendering. Um, that also unlocks some anti-alias and some anisotropic filtering um, items. So I know that I'm capable of running 2X SAA, or double SAA FXAA, and I'm also capable of running 16X on the anisotropic filtering. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn those on, uh, just because that'll make the video look a lot nicer. The rest of the stuff up here, like I said, we don't care about. Extended DSF sceneries is a new addition to X-Plane 10.40. Um, that means that when you are at altitude in your big airliners, you'll be able to see um, nice, clear landscapes uh, as far as the eye can see, as opposed to previously um, in X-Plane, you, you got really blurry landscapes once you got out of a single tile away from you. A uh, big complaint that a lot of people flying up high had. So if you can get away with it, extended DSF sceneries are totally worth running. So we're going to turn those on. And then lastly, uh, down in the special viewing options section, generally I do not recommend touching any of these settings unless you know exactly what they're used for. Uh, they can do things like rotate like rotate your camera in such a way <laughs> that makes you uh, wonder why is everything tilted at a 10 degree angle. But we are going to go ahead and change the field of view uh, because if you notice we were like super zoomed in on that cockpit and we want to be kind of pulled back a little bit. So I personally like a field of view of 85 in the sim. I run a 32-inch television set as my primary display, so I feel like this gives me a nice, a nice view of what's going on around me without, without getting too overly absurd. So we'll run those settings, click on the X button here. The sim's going to take a second. I'm going to run through a reload here because we turned HDR on. Uh, as you can see, now with the, with the field of view set to 85, we're able to see a lot more of that cockpit. Um, we're able to see a lot more of the instruments and... Uh, on my big display, I have no issues actually reading any of this text. This is one of those, the field of view is one of those settings where uh, you're going to want to probably t tinker around with it and find the point that, that is most comfortable for your eyes. I've seen people on Twitch that have been running like 120 field of view, like the super fish eye view thing going, and it's not really my thing. Like I don't, I don't particularly like that. This, this feels very natural to me with the, uh, with the 85. So the next thing I want to cover, and this is probably one of the um, uh, one of the bigger advantages I would say to using X Plane is uh, are, the, are the camera settings, the, the the control settings. I get questions all the time: How do you move your camera around? How do you move around the cockpit so fast? How are you looking like that? And 
Um, the the built-in camera controls for X-Plane are honestly like really good. Uh, a lot of a lot of people in the FSX world have Easy Dock and and use Easy Dock to manipulate their cameras and all that good stuff. And um, basically, we seem to have. I, I I've never personally used Easy Dock, so I don't know what all functionality is is included in that particular package. But um, from what I understand, the default camera functionality in X-Plane is pretty damn close to what Easy Dock is capable of doing. So let's talk about cameras. Um, first thing that we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and look around the cockpit. I wanna make sure that I'm in 3D cockpit mode. So if I go to view and then 3D cockpit command look or shift nine, press that button right there. Um, we'll put ourselves into a 3D cockpit mode, which apparently we were already in. Now to move around the, the to move around the, or look around the cabin, I should say, it's as simple as holding down your right mouse button and moving your mouse. So we can look to the right, we can look to the left, we can look down, we can look up, and if you want to zoom into something, you can just use your mouse wheel. So in FSX, the mouse wheel is primarily used to manipulate controls. In X-Plane, with the exception of some new payware aircraft, the, the mouse wheel is um, traditionally used to zoom in and out. So we can look over here to the left. We can zoom in on that United 747 if we want to. We can zoom all the way back out. And we can look around. Um, some other nice things about the X-Plane camera system, if we go outside the airplane, so we'll go um, outside the plane using circle view, so shift four would be the key for that. Once we're outside the plane, we can hold the right mouse button down and we can look around the plane. And in circle mode, the camera remains with the whole kind of with the camera remains independent of the movement of the plane. So the plane will tilt and kind of move around and all that stuff, and the camera will stay where it's at. One of the other one of the the next cool thing, um, I'm losing my words here. The next thing to hit on that a lot of people ask about is how do how do I um, how do I zoom in uh, zoom out? How do I move the camera? Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna detach. Uh, well, I'll show you move in and move out first. Um, to to zoom in on the plane, we can use our mouse wheel. We can also use the period and comma keys. So period will take us in closer to the plane. And comma will take us further out. And if we hold the shift button down and then press comma, we go really fast. Hold the shift button and press period, we go really fast. Now, if we want to detach the camera from the plane, we can press the C key on our keyboard or um, view is free camera button. So we'll press the C key right now. Now we are detached from the plane completely. And when we move out, and we turn the camera and we move out some more, we don't actually move around based on where the plane is at. So we can move in and out, forward and backwards with the period and comma keys. We can move up with the arrow up key, down with the arrow down key, left with arrow left, and right with arrow right. And if we hold the shift button, we can move faster. So we'll go way up here, we'll look out over Seattle, big Boeing country, and kind of uh, take in the sights and the sounds. And then we'll go Shift period, we'll zoom really quickly back into our plane. Boop, just like that. Look the camera up, and we'll hit the up button a few times to detach ourselves. And now we can zoom into this plane. We can kind of look around the plane. We can get in real close. We can look at some of the nooks and the crannies and whatnot of the plane. So that's a really cool way to look around. One of the nice things, like people have probably seen me on my stream do this, is I'll move the camera all the way to the end of the runway. And I'll watch some, like I'll, I'll zoom in and watch a plane come in. Like we might watch somebody landing here on the, uh, on the network and whatnot. So um, C key to, uh, to do that, to detach the camera. And if you're moving and you press the C key, your plane will just keep on going. Your camera's going to sit there and, well, I don't know what's going on. So um, what's also cool about that, if we go uh, back, into the, uh, back into the 3D cockpit, so shift nine to get back into the 3D cockpit, we can also go period and comma, to move back and forward, right, left, up, and down. And that'll move us around the cockpit and that'll actually stay with the plane as we're moving along. So we can basically put our camera anywhere we want and we can say, ah, I wanna go stare at the wing for a while. And so as we're up in the air and we're flying, we're staring at the wing. Which brings us to the next point about, it's nice to move around the cockpit and nice to move around the cameras around, but what I wanna do is I wanna be able to set hotkeys. So the first hotkey, uh, the uh, explains camera, you can take the camera, you can put it anywhere, and you can set a hotkey that says, remember this position as this button. And it will always remember that position as that button, and when you press that button, it'll go directly to the position. Um, so to demonstrate that, we're gonna go back to our normal 3D cockpit with command look view. So, uh, whoops, somehow we got off the rails here. 
So to demonstrate that, we'll go back to our 3D cockpit view and look around the airplane a little bit if we want to. But let's say that this is, this is our default looking forward view. Um, I like to set this particular view. So we're going to be setting uh, on our keypad, we're going to be setting views to numbers on the keypad. And to do that, you're going to press the control button and then that number on the keypad. So in this case, I like to set this to control four or to keypad four. So I, hit, I press control and then four, and this position is now locked into keypad four. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the right arrow, move the camera over to the, uh, the, past, the right seat location. And I like to put this on control six. So I'm going to press control six right here. And then the next view that I like to have is I like to have one that looks in right here at the GPS. So I can kind of zoom in close. This is GPS, FMC, you know, whatever I happen to have in my particular plane. I like to be right up next to it so I can manipulate it. And my particular place to put this is control is on keypad three. So we'll press control three. So we've set up a, uh, a pilot view, a co-pilot view, and a, uh, a rudimentary FMC or GPS view. Now, if I go ahead from this spot and press four, we go to our pilot view. If I press six, we go to our co-pilot view. And if I press three, we come down to our, uh, our GPS view. I can go back to six and go to co-pilot view. I can go back to four. I can manipulate these however I want to get around. So we can take this a little bit further. Uh, I like to also pull my camera back sometimes, and I do this for, for some video purposes, pull my camera back sometimes between the actual uh, pilots and set this view up as control five. I like to move my camera over to a passenger view or looking out over the wing, kind of get my little wing view here. I like to put that on seven, so I'll put that on seven. We'll do the same thing on the right. We'll put this on nine. So now I can move around the cockpit four. I can go to the right wing. I can go to the left wing. I can go back to the GPS. I can go back to the left wing, or I can go to the, the oops, I can go to the co-pilot. So I can manipulate, I can move myself around the cabin in lots of different ways. Um, the camera controls extend beyond just cabin though. So if we go to the view menu and we go to chase, we're now behind the aircraft. Uh, I'm going to push the arrow key up here, kind of move the camera up. We're going to push the period key to pull the camera in. Move the camera up just a little bit more. Now I'm going to take this view, control zero, and now the keypad zero will have this particular view locked in. If we bring the camera using the uh, arrow key left and then arrow key down, we're going to center the plane up real nicely here. Pull the camera just underneath the undercarriage. This is where you get those real nice takeoff shots where you see the undercarriage coming up. And we're going to press control one. So now we have set uh, the outside, we have set control, we have set keypad one to be a forward view looking underneath the plane and keypad zero to be a behind the plane view uh, looking this way. So we can go from this behind the plane view to let's say the right wing, back to the behind the plane view to the pilot, to the undercarriage, to the pilot, to the co-pilot. Now we have some very simple views set up for moving around the cabin. Um, X-Plane's view system is awesome. And, and I think that it's one of the major selling points of this sim, uh, the fact that it has this kind of functionality in it by default. And there's just, there's a lot of ways that you can, there's a lot of different little cameras that you can come up with, a lot of ways that you can set things up. Um, like I'm, I, I always find new camera views that I'm really like, that I'm really tickled to death about. So um, that's the X-Plane camera views. If you guys have any questions about that, please, 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 please ask. We're kind of done with the view section. Let's move on to uh, the meat and potatoes of this discussion. Let's start talking about some controls. Uh, X-Plane controls, perhaps one of the most daunting <laughs> sets of controls to set up. Uh, FSX and FSUI PC, to some extent, had these nice little menus that made it uh, not super easy, but I would say a little bit more intuitive to find. X-Plane, not so much, as you're about to see. So we need to set up our joystick. I personally, like I said earlier, have an X55 Rhino by Cytec. Um, I like my joystick. It has all the buttons I feel I need in, 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 in X-Plane um, and, and then more. There's a lot of stuff that I don't even have mapped. And I have, my goal is to have any control that I need to, like anything that I need to manipulate when I'm hand flying the plane, with the exception of comm radios and nav radios and whatnot, are on my joystick or my throttle. I want to have to take my hand off the throttle as little as possible when I'm actually hand flying the plane. So with that philosophy, let's, uh, let's move into getting this whole thing set up. Uh, so we're going to go to the settings uh, menu and then joystick and equipment. So we're going to see everything going all crazy right now. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to exercise every single axis on your joystick and your, and your, your pedals and your HOTAS and e everything that's got a slider knob or a rotating knob. 
mess around with it. Okay, get it working. Push it forward, pull it back. Every single knob. And that's, your, like I said, your pedals, your stick, and your, hot or your throttle. Um, we'll start with basic flight commands. So if we're going to go pitch forward, what we're going to do is we're going to move it. We're going to move an axis. We're going to see which one on here moves, and we're going to set that. So on my, th on my stick, I'm going to go my pitch, so uh, my, my Y axis. So I pull that back. I push it forward. I can see that one right there is moving. So we'll set that to pitch. We'll do the same thing for roll. Roll left, roll right. And we'll set our roll up. And then we'll go ahead and set, um, I personally have rudder pedals, so I'm going to move my rudder pedals to the right and to the left. I can see those moving right there. That's going to be my yaw. I have toe brakes, so I'm going to push my toe brake on the right. That's him right there. We'll set that to right toe brake. Toe brake on the left. We'll set that to left toe brake. And then if we move over to the throttle, um, I'm going to detach my throttles. We'll move the left throttle first. That's him right there. So that is throttle one. Left throttle to throttle one. And we go right, that'll be throttle two. So the right throttle will be throttle two. On the rotaries, uh, I, have an, I have all of my rotaries on my throttle, on my, my throttle map to something. So the top rotary, which is rotary F, and this is the one that's right on top of your stick. We're going to turn that a few times. That's him right there. We're going to set him to, excuse me, we're going to set him to view zoom. So view zoom, and we're actually going to reverse that. And I'll show you why here in a second. So that's set to view zoom. The next one is going to be the thumb, the thumb, uh, the thumb rotary. That's going to be rotary G uh, next to the slider on my, hot or on my throttle. And we're going to set that to speed brake. So we'll put that on speed brakes. And we won't be able to show the speed brakes off in this particular video just because of the plane that we're using. But rest assured, it's there. The next thing is rotary 3. That's going to be on the base of the, um, on the pedestal of the throttle, the leftmost rotary. We'll turn that a few times. That's going to be my props. And rotary four. That's going to be my mixture. And I, I don't I have a combined prop and a combined mixture. Um, I don't I don't have a way of splitting those up. So those are all of our axes. Uh, if we go to the null zone section. In this particular section, I recommend pulling all these sliders left. So we get rid of all of our augmentation and then set your uh, you can set your response curves as you like them. I like a good 50, I actually like 50% response curve, which means that the, it starts off, your joystick is less sensitive and then becomes more sensitive as you move. Your mileage may vary. Moving down to the bottom section, uh, I will set a slight null zone. Uh, unfortunately, we have to do this. Uh, about a 7% null zone is what works for me. And basically that means that when your joystick moves inside that little space there, uh, it won't actually register as being, as being moved. And then hit the button here that says center the yoke. And now, wherever your controls are centered, that's where they stay. Uh, let's go ahead and close this out, and we can test this. Um, take the zoom all the way back. So the, view, the zoom axis that we set up literally is, is, so instead of using the mouse wheel, we can just use this knob here. So I can look to the left. I can say, hey, there's that united plane. Whoops, I can zoom in on him right there. So I like to do this because um, as, I'm look, like, as I use track IR and kind of look around the cockpit, uh, I can easily just, because uh, since I have my hand on that spot, I can just really quickly zoom in on something. Uh, we set up our speed brakes and whatnot, so which we're not able to test. We did set up a prop, so we can move our prop, our rotary three, and we can see the, the, blue, um, the blue handle moving. We can check our mixture. We can see the mixture is moving when we move rotary four. We have our throttle split. We move the left throttle. We can see the left throttle. We move the right throttle. We can see the right throttle. So we'll pull all those all the way back. We take a look at our control surfaces here, our control, or our yoke, I should say. The left and the right works, back and the forward works. And then looking down here at the pedals, full right works, full left works. And we can't see the toe brakes, but rest assured the toe brakes are probably working because we just actually saw the parking brake turn off. Uh, we can even move outside the cockpit and check that as well. So those are the axes. Uh, that's actually the easy part of setting up controls. Uh, the next thing that we're going to want to cover is uh, setting up the, uh, the actual buttons, kind of the, the, the nuts and the bolts of flight simming, if you will. So we're going to go back to the settings button. We're going to go back to joystick and equipment. And this time we're going to hit buttons advanced. So if there was ever a slide to say, welcome to X-Plane, it would be looking at this particular page. Um, of all the things in the sim that need to be configured better, this is the one I think that is the worst. 
Um, what we have here is a, a <laughs> is a matrix of all the potential buttons on our uh, joystick, um, on all joysticks, I should say, all control surfaces, and then a rather uh, obtuse list of things that we can set them to. Uh, they, they are categorized in ways that don't always make sense, and the thing that you're looking for isn't always in the place that you think it should be. So, uh, first thing that we want to do on the left, on the matrix here, is uncheck anything that's checked. What we can do is if you go to your joystick and you start pushing different buttons, you'll see them light up. Not necessarily in places that you think they would make sense to light up, but they're there. They're out there. Through the powers of editing, with any luck, uh, I'm going to show you a picture of where, what our end goal is. This is where we want to be. This is the way that we want to have everything set up. Uh, again, these are my preferences. You can change them as you will but I have found this control scheme to work very well for me. First thing that we're gonna work on is the point of view hat. We're gonna be on our stick, on the left, right, side of our, right side of our setup here, the point of view hat. This is the hat on the left, the, the hat switch on the left side. It literally says POV. Um, so move that around, we can kind of see where it lights up. Uh, the first key that we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna hit the up, uh, we're gonna hit point of view hat up, and we're gonna bind that to general. general in the in the middle section and then in the right section we're going to set that to command tilt up so what this is going to do is this is going to make our view look up and then we'll come back here we'll press the down and we'll set this to general and we'll say general command look down or tilt down i'm sorry tilt down and then we're going to take the right this one we're actually going to we're going to set to general again so we're actually gonna set the right one to pan right fast. God damn it. I practiced all this before I even recorded this video to make sure I knew what I was doing and I still have no idea what I'm doing. We'll push the point of view left and we'll go to general, pan left fast. So now we have right set to pan right fast, left set to pan left fast, up set to tilt up, and down set to tilt down. So what does that do for us? We come back to our, our plane here, we'll go into keypad 4 or the key, the uh, the cockpit view and now if I push left I can look left if I push right I can look right up I can look up slow and down I can look down so what you can see here is that if we're looking forward and we say well actually I want to look at the GPS unit for a second we can do just that and I have not had to take my hand off the keyboard or off the off the control surfaces to make that happen so we'll go back to settings joystick and equipment buttons advanced so that's that that's that that hat switch uh, moving to the H2 hat. This is on the right side. This is the big gray hat switch. Uh, these, are gonna, these are where I keep my pitch controls. So we're going to press H2 up, that guy right there. And we're going to bind that to flight controls. And pitch trim down. Um, this will probably be a point of contention with some people. Uh, whether you want to have the up be down or the up be up, I, you can set that how you like. Pitch trim down feels the most natural to me on the up button. If we press down, so H2 down, we can go to uh, gen or sorry not general flight controls, and scroll down here, and we're gonna go to pitch trim up. And we'll go uh, on the left. So if we press the left button, uh, I personally like to have my aileron trim on this particular hat switch. It would probably be more. Uh, it would probably be more correct if you put your, your rudder trim on here, but X-Plane has a tendency to roll heavily to the left and to the right. And because I'm not using a yoke and because I don't have a way of feeling the airplane, I cheat and I put my aileron trim and I use my aileron trim fairly religiously. We're going to set the H2 left to flight controls. Right there. And then rudder, or sorry, not rudder trim, aileron trim left. Aileron trim left. Right there, that one's easy. And if we push the right button, we're going to go flight controls, either on trim right. Moving up to the H1 hat switch, uh, we're only going to map left and right on this one. I have no use for up and down at the moment. H1 to the right, we can then, we're can we going to map that to flight controls. And we're looking for rudder trim right. Rudder, 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 rudder trim right. Uh, sorry, rudder, rudder trim rigget. Not a bug. Always find bugs. And then if we press the left button, we go to flight controls, and we'll call that rudder trim to the left. That'll set our rudder trim. 
So that is all three hat switches, how I have them set up. Uh, the next thing we're going to map is the actual trigger button. I use this as my autopilot. So I'm going to pull the trigger. Nice, satisfying click. There is no autopilot toggle in X-Plane. For 99% of the planes that I've used, this trick will work. However, I flew the Cessna 172 by Airfoil Labs recently, and it did not work on this plane. So for most of the planes, this is the way that you'll toggle the autopilot. So we'll pull the trigger in, and then we're going to go to autopilot. And we're looking for servos toggle. Servos toggle. So then this button will actually toggle the autopilot on or off. Uh, the next button that we're looking for is uh, the B button. That is uh, on your, it's going to be on your right index finger on the right side of the stick. Press that button in right there. And I'm actually going to set this to cockpit location 5. So that way that I can, I can look around the cockpit, I can push that button, and it'll immediately snap back to the, whatever I have on keypad 4. So cockpit location 5, that's going to be view. And cockpit location number 5. 3D cockpit location number five, there we go. So that will be on the right side there. Uh, next up is gonna be D. That's gonna be the, uh, at your pinky, not the lever, but the button. Push that button right there. And we're gonna call that one uh, rudder trim center. So we need to go to flight controls and then rudder trim center. And this is just so that I can quickly center my rudder trim. Um, very useful, <laughs> very, very useful to be able to do this. And just above that is, or just past that is the pinky lever. We'll pull that and that's gonna be aileron trim center. So same sort of thing. So we're gonna go to flight controls and aileron trim center. Let's see if we can find that. Aileron trim center right there, perfect. And then the last thing on our stick, we're gonna go to point C. Is that a C? I think it's a C, it's gonna be your thumb button. And this, um, this, is, this is probably going to be a different bind depending on what you, like if you fly online or whatnot. But if you're flying on Pilot Edge, this, uh, this is what we will use to talk to ATC. So we're going to set this to Operation and then Contact ATC. So if we're on Pilot Edge, this is the button that I press and hold to talk to the ATC. Uh, if we go ahead and back out now, take a look around, uh, we'll be able to verify that everything is working properly. So if we come out of the cockpit, we're going to go ahead and turn the battery on. This is necessary in order for us to be able to change the trims and kind of make some things move around. We're just going to test to make sure things are working the way we want them to. So we're going to check the pitch trim. That makes the thing, that makes the, uh, the pitch trim move here. We'll check the aileron trim. We can see that moving down to the bottom. That's down here. And then we'll check the, the rudder trim. That works right there. And with the aileron trim and the rudder trim, we should be able to center the aileron trim and then center the rudder trim. That also works. Um, view trick that I showed you. So if we look around the cabin, we're looking at absolutely nothing. We go ahead and push that, uh, that button on the side of our stick to go back to view five. That'll take us right there. So what we can do here is if we look to the right, snap back, we look to the left, snap back. Nice little trick if you're not using track IR. If you are using track IR, that's also the button that I bind to toggle track IR. So I can turn track IR, I can look forward, turn track IR off, uh, off and then look around the cabin and have no issues. So that's our stick. Let's go ahead and go back to settings joystick and equipment, and we'll work on the, uh, the throttle now. So on the throttle, uh, we're going to start with KI up and down. Those are the, uh, if you have your hand on the throttle, on the left throttle, that's the toggle up and toggle down switches. So KI pushing that down, we're going to bind that to flaps. Uh, so flight controls. And we're going to bind KI down to flaps down a notch. Flaps down a notch. And then we pull that back. KI up, we're going to bite that to flight controls, and then flaps up a notch. Uh, moving to the right throttle, there's two buttons on your finger, um, I and H. So I is the one on the left. Yep, I is the one on the left. Push that in right there. And we're going to bind that to landing gear toggle. So flight controls, landing gear toggle. It's in here somewhere. Right there it is. All right, and then the one on the right. Uh, this is gonna be the first of kind of our autopilot manipulation. Um, so if I push the uh, button on the right, which is gonna be button H, we're gonna go now to autopilot. Autopilot. And we wanna bind this to autopilot heading sync. Autopilot heading sync. So what this'll do is no matter where I'm flying, if I push that button, it'll take the heading bug and it'll sync it to my current, my current, um, my current heading. 
very, very nice if suddenly you decide that you want to turn the autopilot on in heading mode and follow your current heading. Otherwise, your plane's going to start turning and you're going to scramble and you're going to try to move it. And this is just way easier to do. Moving on from there, we're going to go to, uh, if we look at the G rotary, we bound the G rotary to our speed brakes. You can actually push those rotaries in. So if we push that G rotary in, we're going to bind this to speed brakes retract one. Uh, that's going to be flight controls, speed brakes retract one. So the reason we're doing this is if you're in a complex, like a complex jet that has speed brakes, say the, uh, the A320 or the 737, uh, if you pull your speed brakes all the way back, that'll turn them off, but that doesn't actually enable them, like doesn't set them for auto, auto speed brakes or auto brakes or whatever once you hit the ground. So by hitting the little retract button, what it'll do is it'll actually send a command to X-Plane to say continue retracting even though you've already retracted all the way. It basically goes like a negative one, and that'll arm the speed brakes for landing. That way, when you touch down, your speed brakes will automatically, um, automatically go up and will help you slow the plane down. So as I'm coming in on approach, I make sure that my speed brakes are all the way back, and then I just tap that little, that little rotary in, and that'll arm them. Uh, otherwise, you have to reach, and you have to grab, and you have to pull, and do all sorts of other stuff. Little little hack that I found. Uh, we're going to now move on to the E key. The E key is the red thumb button on your, uh, on your throttle. So push that in right there. Did I actually set that? Yes, I did. Okay, push that in right there on the E key. These are going to be our reverser toggles. So we go to engines and toggle reversers. Toggle thrust reversers. Next up, we're going to go to the switches. So these are the switches that are on the back side of the base of the throttle. We have switches one through six. Um, and these are going to be various autopilot manipulators. So switch one, which is going to be the up switch, uh, is going to be autopilot. Autopilot. And that's going to be autopilot heading up. So we're going to use switch one and switch two to manipulate our autopilot heading so that we can be hands on and be able to very quickly move our heading uh, as necessary. Combine this with autopilot sync, and now we've got a really easy way to fly the plane around without having to grab manipulators and reach for the mouse. Uh, that's switch one. Switch two, we go to autopilot, autopilot heading down. Switch, uh, switches three and four are going to be used for our nav, for our OBS, um, our OBS devices, our, uh, basically our course devices. So switch three is going to be radios, OBS one up, radios, OBS one up. If I can find it, where'd it go? OBS one up. And then switch number four, SW4, it's going to be radios. OBS one down. Switches number five and six are switches that I use to manipulate the, uh, the vertical mode of the plane. Uh, in some aircraft, this will move the vertical speed. This will the, uh, move the IAS mode. This will move various things. Uh, most planes, this actually just moves the pitch up and down. So uh, we're going to, uh, that's generally what I will do. I'll turn altitude hold mode off and then I'll pitch the plane up and I'll pitch the plane down to the altitude that I want to move to. So switch number five, we're going to set to autopilot, autopilot nose down, autopilot. Autopilot nose down, and then switch number six, we're going to set to autopilot. Autopilot nose up. That'll allow us to then pitch the plane up, pitch the plane down. And then uh, the last one that we want to do is on your thumb, you have HH. It's going to be the bottom most hat switch on your thumb. Uh, we're going to push that uh, down. We're going to use these to manipulate our actual altitudes that we have plugged in. So. Uh, we have set an altitude of, say, 8,000 feet. We've been told to descend to 4,000. We're flying by hand, and we don't necessarily want to uh, take our hands off the throttle so that we can mouse the, auto, or mouse the altitude down, so we can use this to manipulate the altitude. So HH down, we're going to set to autopilot, autopilot, altitude down. Autopilot, altitude down. And then HH up, we're going to set to autopilot, autopilot, altitude up. And that's it. That's everything. That is 100% the control scheme that I use in X-Plane. So let's pop our way out of here. Um, let's go ahead and test this sucker out. We've loaded up in a plane that's a little bit more complex now to show off uh, some of the, the various features of this, air, of this aircraft. Uh, what we're going to do is just run through and make sure that all of, our, all of our settings, all of our knobs work. So on the stick, we're going to check our views. Look left, look right, look up, look down. Uh, if we look forward and we press control four, we'll set that to our default view. 
Uh, we will. We already checked our aileron and rudder, or, or we already checked our trims, but we'll check those again. Trim up, trim down, and then if we look at the aileron, aileron moves, and the rudder moves. Go ahead and check the resets on those. Those work. Uh, that view button works. So our stick is in good shape. Actually, we can press the autopilot servos toggle, and we'll see the autopilot engage. Press the servos toggle again. The autopilot will disengage. That's good. Um, let's go ahead and move over to the uh, to the the uh, the throttle. Uh, we will make sure. Let's check the gear handle. Well, actually, let's check flaps up and flaps down. So if we move flaps up or flaps down, that works. Flaps up works. We can obviously see that our throttles are working too. Uh, we can check the uh, landing gear toggle. So landing gear toggle works. The next button that we set was the heading sync. Uh, if we look down at our HSI here, and we pull heading sync, whoops, and we pull heading sync, we can see that it syncs up. Well, more or less syncs our heading. I'm not sure why that's just a little bit off, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll pretend we didn't see that. Uh, we can check. Next, we'll check, uh, we'll check this, the speed brakes. So we got the speed brake axis, and then if we push and hold, if we push the speed brake button, you'll see how the speed brake comes back just a little bit. That actually arms the speed brakes for, uh, for landing. Uh, we'll check our thr throttles, or our reversers. We push the reverser button. Well, reversers tend to be a little finicky. I think the plane needs to be on for reversers. Rest assured, though, I think the reversers would work if the, uh, if the plane was on properly. But uh, that would, that's one that we're going to have to come back to. Uh, we set altitude altitude modes, so we can hold, hold that button up, set the altitude up. This plane moves the altitude a little slowly using those manipulators. Um, other planes behave a little differently, but at least we know that button works. We want to check the heading, uh, the heading mode, so switches 1 and 2. Switch 2 will set the heading to lower. Switch 1 will set the heading to higher. Same thing with course. There and there. Uh, I can't really show you, I can't really show you the pitch mode, but rest assured, pitch mode will work. That's on switches five and six. So we've gone through, we've made sure, uh, whatever we can test, we have tested, and we're kind of ready to go fly. So thank you everybody so much for tuning in. Uh, I hope this tutorial was useful to people. Uh, if you know people that are interested in getting into X-Plane and are having problems getting started, please, please, please pass this along. I'm doing this not for the views, which the views are nice and the comments are nice, but I want to I see our community continue to grow as much as possible. And I feel that having more of these types of guides out there um, will, will, are nothing but a net positive to the community as a whole. So the nice thing is, is that all of the things that we've covered today will work in the demo version of X-Plane as well as the full version. So if you just want to dabble in X-Plane a little bit, go check out the demo, um, run through this tutorial. You know, you have a 15 minute limitation on using your flight controls. But you can set all this stuff up, close the sim, reload the sim, and then see if it's going to be something that you enjoy. You'll start at this very field with this very scenery that we're looking at, and you'll have access to the, the couple of planes that we flew earlier today. So thank you again all for joining, uh, or for tuning in, and be sure to check out uh, more of my YouTube videos. Be sure to give me a follow. Be sure to like this if you like it, dislike if you don't like it. Give me some comments, and also check out my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash I uh, Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll uh, definitely see you next time.